if you keep getting buttock or leg pain on both sides, which forces you to stop walking, but you find relief when you sit down and lean forwards like this, then this is the video for you. The condition we're talking about in this video is lumbar spinal stenosis, a common issue as we age. The condition is caused by narrowing in the lower spine, which puts pressure on the nerves which travel to your legs. Now, lumbar spinal stenosis is common in older adults, so you're not alone in this experience. In fact, research suggests that the presence of this condition amongst the American population is around 11%, and the condition is very rare below the age of 50. Before we continue, I want to welcome you to the Physio channel. My name is Daniel, and in this video, we're gonna delve into the precise symptoms of lumbar spinal stenosis. We'll explore why these symptoms occur, and more importantly, some simple non-surgical solutions to help you reduce the pain. Just please remember this is an educational video and not medical advice, but we hope you find it helpful. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that the key symptoms were buttock and leg pain when standing and walking. Other common symptoms include heaviness in the legs, pins and needles in the buttocks and radiating down the legs, and night cramps can be a key feature. These symptoms I've just described are due to pressure on your nerves due to narrowing of the lumbar spinal canal. The word stenosis means narrowing, and more precisely, the blood supply to the nerves is reduced by this narrowing in the spinal canal. Now, it's important for me to make you aware that the narrowing in your lumbar spinal canal is often affected by the position of your spine. So if you are up straight like this, or even hyperextended through your lumbar spine, then this can reduce the space in the canal and even increase the lumbar stenosis. And that's why the symptoms are often relieved by leaning forwards as this can open up the canal, reduce the stenosis and restore that blood supply. So people often find relief when they lean forwards on a trolley or uh, over a railing, for example. And of course, as I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, relief is often found by sitting down, especially leaning forwards. It restores the blood supply and reduces your symptoms. So now we know what we're dealing with and what the cause is. In this video, I'm gonna show you four exercises, four stretches and five strategies to help you reduce the pain from lumbar spinal stenosis. These techniques have helped my patients go from this to this. So let's get started. So let's start by opening up the spinal canal with this simple stretching routine. I'm gonna show you four stretches. So for the first stretch, lie down comfortably, make sure you've got suitably flexible clothing and have your feet down and your knees up. Take one knee and bring it up over your chest. When you do this, you should also feel a stretch in your lower back as that is pulled away from the floor. If this is a bit uncomfortable on the inner part of your groin, then turn the hip out by taking your knee away from your torso and stretch up like so. Don't hold your breath and breathe out as you pull further into the stretch. Now this is just a quick stretch, so hold each one for around three to five seconds. For the next stretch, bring both knees up and pull them up towards your chest. Once again, if the hips are a little bit uncomfortable, open the knees, that can make the stretch more comfortable for you. Now, as you bring your knees up towards your chest, you should feel your lower back start to come away from the floor. And that's good, that's what you're looking for. Once again, breathe out as you bring your knees up towards your chest. So let your head come up so you can make a nice curve between your lower back and your neck. Move slowly in and out of the stretch. For the next technique, we're going to be in a kneeling position and focusing on curving that lumbar spine. Now, if it's a bit uncomfortable to be kneeling right down on your heels like so, then take a cushion, pop that under the back of your legs, and that'll reduce the knee flexion and may make it a bit more comfortable for you. If that's not comfortable enough, then of course, put another cushion underneath. Hopefully that will help. And then you need a larger cushion or pillow or something suitable in front of you. And you're gonna hug that into your tummy and you're gonna try and curve over it as much as possible. Now it's not essential to have that because you can do the exercise without, but having something there to curve over just helps you to focus on getting the right movement, which is maximal curvature, maximal flexion through that lumbar spine. So from there, curving forwards once again, exhale as you go into the stretch, holding that stretch position for a good 10 to 30 seconds. If it feels good, then go ahead and hold it for longer. I hope you liked that stretch. It often feels really good. Now, let me show you the next one. So if you're getting some of those dreaded leg cramps at night, then it may help to raise your feet, which can help to reduce that curve in the lumbar spine. So once again, 
using some pillows or a large cushion, popping that underneath your legs may help. The other thing I was going to show you is a stretch. So based on the stretches we've just done, if you're lying on your side, you can also bring your knees up and curve that lumbar spine, potentially opening up the spinal canal and then hopefully reducing your leg cramps. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that stretching routine. Next, we're gonna do some Pilates exercises to build up our control of the lumbar spine and once again, open up that spinal canal. Start in this position again. Place your hands on the side of your pelvis so you can feel the movement. And then the instruction is to flatten your spine and tilt an imaginary glass of wine towards you. And that rhymes, by the way. So flatten the spine, tilt the wine. If I just show you with my hands, my pelvis is tilting towards me. Therefore, the arch in my lumbar spine will reduce and flatten. My lumbar spine will then press against the floor and the pelvis will tilt. My bum will lift off slightly, but not too much, just a little bit as my pelvis tilts towards me. So flatten the spine and tilt the wine. It's just a small pelvic tilt, sometimes described as a rocking of the pelvis. And you'll feel the muscles in your tummy, particularly the lower abdominals, working hard to produce this movement. You'll also feel your glutes contracting as well. Okay, so keep doing this movement nice and slow, under control. Don't hold your breath. I recommend doing this exercise for one minute before we move on to the next one. So for the next exercise, you're gonna go round onto all fours. From here, you're gonna do the same movement, but because you're not lying on the floor, you should be able to get some more curvature through your spine as you tuck your bum in and tilt your pelvis. Then go back to neutral. You can, with this exercise, go right through into an arching position. So do go ahead and do that if you want to. But of course, that's the position we're trying to avoid. We're trying to work on a neutral spine and a curved spine. Tilting that pelvis, tucking the bum in, getting a nice curve through that lower back. Okay, so now you've got the hang of doing the pelvic tilts lying down and in the four point kneeling position. Next, I want to go through them with you in the seated position. So here we're going to do the pelvic tilt in the seated position. Just need to be seated in a comfortable chair, nothing too low. So a higher chair or a stool or even sitting on the edge of the armchair or sofa will work. Put your hands on your pelvis. That will help again to feel the movement. And then we want to tuck your bum under and curve your lower spine. So you will actually go into a slump position, which might feel a bit odd because typically physios tell you to sit up straight, which is actually not always that helpful. So here we're going from the straight position, tucking the bum under, curving the lower back. So if you are out and about and you need to sit down and get some relief from those leg symptoms, then you know to tuck your bum under and get a nice curve through that lumbar spine and hold that position for a few seconds. In fact, you can rest there for a while if that feels comfortable. Otherwise, move from neutral down into lumbar flexion. Now, part four of this exercise series simply involves doing those exercises in a standing position, which you may find helpful. Again, when you're out and about, your legs start to ache and there might not be anywhere comfortable or easy to sit down. So therefore, you can try doing the exercise in a standing position. So start standing up straight, and then once again, tuck your bum under, curve forwards, and get a nice curve through that lumbar spine. You can then go into a partial squat position, which allows you to rest your hands on your thighs just above your knees there. And then you can get a nice curve, almost like you're sitting down. And this will get a nice stretch through your lumbar spine, opening up that spinal canal and hopefully reducing some of those symptoms. Now, in the final section of this video, I'm going to share with you some common strategies that you can use to stay active and reduce the pain. Number one. Make a note of how long you can walk for and plan sitting breaks before the leg pains force you to stop. Number two, while you plan your sitting breaks, you may not find there's anywhere suitable to sit. Therefore, these foldable seats are a fantastic option. Number three, you may find walking up hills more comfortable and therefore avoiding steep descents will also help. Number four, walking poles may encourage you to lean forwards more, as can shopping trolleys. Just make sure you use them at the correct time.
And finally, number five, a treadmill on an incline is an option and other exercise machines like the rower and bike also place your lower back in a flexed position, opening up that canal and restoring the blood flow to your nerves. So these exercises are excellent for maintaining your fitness without aggravating the symptoms. So many of my patients have got significant relief from following these strategies. Please let us know in the comments if there's any other strategies which you can share with the viewers. Otherwise, thanks for watching and please share this video with anybody you know who may find it helpful.